This is Pete Moore on Halo Talks. I have a Halo certified executive in the executive recruiting space. Good friend Barry coming at us from the Elliott Group. Barry, welcome finally to the show. Pete, it's been a long time coming, man. How are you? Good, man. I feel like, uh, you know, we've been we've been trying to get you on the show. You've been playing a little bit, you know, hard to get, and we're going to play a little hard to give. So let's just kind of go from here. and We'll, you know, we'll get you guys on more frequently. Um, so good, good to see you happy and healthy. Uh, want to talk you. today. Want to talk today with our listeners about the benefits of hiring an executive recruiter to build your all-star team and also give some advice to executives that may be changing careers or might find themselves looking for another opportunity post COVID and, um, get your, uh, get your counseling and your cliff notes on, on how to find the ideal job. So you want to give your personal background, uh, and a background on the Elliott group and we'll kind of riff from there. Happy to Pete, when you sent me the bat signal, you know, I had to come on the show. So thanks again for having me and, and the Elliott group on. Thanks for looking out for it. Appreciate it. <laughs> so uh, I'm from Westchester County, New York. I live in the city with my beautiful wife and 19 month old baby. I have a background in hospitality, went to the University of Delaware, proud blue hen. Um, out of college, I got into the real estate business. I was a residential broker. I've always been a big fan and just of people, getting to know people and deep human relationships. And the foundation point for what I think really is just a happy, successful life is people and networking and that that relationship-based uh, foundation. So proud, I'm proud to be with the Elliott Group now going on about four and a half, five years. Just got promoted to senior vice president, uh, which is awesome. We are an executive search firm, an exclusive search firm, working with brands in the consumer space, helping these high growth companies look for the incredible talent that they all need, mostly at the C-level and board level, down to the VP and director levels as well. Our clients range from portfolio brands that are owned and backed by private equity groups, family offices, public companies, down to innovative growth brands that have raised a seed or a series A that are looking for that high caliber talent to take their brand to the next level. Our genesis of the firm, we were founded about 38 years ago by our fearless, fearless founder, Alice Elliott. She's a powerhouse and the, the genesis of the firm was in the restaurant space. So probably about 10 or 15 years ago, most of our equity clients, strategic investors, started to diversify out of the hospitality industry and really into health, wellness, fitness, eat what you call Halo, what we call Halo lovingly, as well as some other industries. And we've seen an incredible amount of growth in this sector the last 10, 15 years. So love the space, love the industry, love the passion and energy. That's great. You know, traditionally, You've seen most, um, traditionally, you've seen a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, post up ads on Indeed or Craigslist or, you know, email some friends, hey, I'm looking for a, a CFO, I'm looking for a CTO, I'm looking for a COO. And, you know, you kind of kind of scratch your head at points and say, well, is that really the proactive approach that you're going to take to hire one of the top five people that are going to be running your business? So talk about, I guess the acceptance of executive recruiting and the dependence that private equity firms have on the Elliott group when they buy a portfolio company, they usually get you guys on right away. So I'll let you kind of go from there. Yeah, absolutely, Pete. So, you know, most of our, just as a little preface or background, most of our work is earned by reputation and referral. Uh, we're not out there marketing our searches. We're not marketing our company on Craigslist, Indeed, TikTok, Instagram, anything where you can find some fun ad. It's really all about taking a company, whether it's a $1 million brand or a $100 million company plus to that next level, whatever that means for that company. So obviously we all, we all recognize that companies of all shapes and sizes are very unique and complex, but at the end of the day, what makes these companies successful, hopefully is the human capital they have taking that brand to that level. So a great, the vast majority of our work is on behalf of these strategic investors, private equity groups, and other formidable investors, family offices, et cetera. And Pete, to your point, they're not posting an, an ad on LinkedIn for 
a chief financial officer, a CEO, board members. Um, they rely upon the LEA group for that white glove experience for us to provide them five to seven candidates that we pre-screen that we really do a deep dive on their background to really ascertain both a cultural fit, which I'll get into, as well as that technical expertise and technical background. Finding that next level talent or leader really is an art and a science. It's not one or the other. And it's important for these, for these brands to recognize that as I'm sure we, as I'm sure you'd agree, Pete, as well, that every company really has to put its people first, because when the people are put first, the customers that taken care of to that to that high caliber. Yeah, they used to say back in uh, summer camp that a happy counselor makes a happy camp, and I think that's true pretty much across the board in any 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 type of uh, business uh, scenario as well. You know, when you take a look at a private equity fund. That buys a company, gives you guys a couple of searches to, to fill, whether that's, let's say, it's the CFO and the COO role. There's always this urgency, like, oh, I got to hire somebody in like two weeks. Or I got to hire somebody in four weeks. And, you know, you're making a big investment in, a, in human capital. So talk about, you know, what's realistic on how long it should take and the benefit of actually taking the time to do it. You know, P, that's a great question. And I'll, I'll, I'll say this to start that patience really is a virtue. So if you're going to your network, if you're in a great equity group, you have an, a stellar network, then you can leverage that, bring someone on that you trust implicitly to get the job done and who's going to be the brand uh, banner waiver and be that flag carrier of the culture, then great. But typically, these brands are coming to the LA group for that really deep dive and kind of that foundation point of the executives that we have built relationships with over the last 5, 10, 20, 30 years. Um, and we're able to really ascertain what are their strengths? How could they add immense value to this brand, whatever that may be? You know, for example, we just placed a couple of very high, uh, you know, we'll, we'll call them, they're C-level executives for a massive beauty brand um, in the halo sector. And this equity group that took a majority stake in this business a number of years ago, the, the most important thing besides the embracement of culture was a strategic vision. Who can go into the boardroom and really should take this company to that level of where they want to go, given their, given their experience having taken other companies through a successful path, are they going public or whatever it may be. So, you know, Pete, you asked the question about timing. Look, I think the equity groups that are making a big investment to buy companies have to be patient to find the human capitalist. Of course, investing in a company, buying a company could take six to 12 months. Due diligence takes a long time for the acquisition of a brand. The due diligence also takes time for us to really find that individual. So we're looking anywhere from three months on average to maybe four months. Every search is so unique and so different, but what you're really getting is, is the Elliott team to serve as an extension of this brand that is going in and ascertaining at a very, very in-depth level the culture of the company. What sets this brand apart from its competitors and from other um, any other company in this space, whether it's direct competition or not? Where is the brand going? What, what is the mission of the brand? Is it mission-driven? Um, these are all very important things that candidates should consider as well in their search. So in diligence on, on deals, there's been some groups that we've worked with in the past. I haven't worked with any recently, but they'll go in and they'll do basically like interview the, the senior management and then give a report back to the private equity fund. Um, how much time do you spend? Obviously, you get embedded in a company to understand the team and the players. We like to use these sports analogies. Or we're writing this book that's coming out related to like your business, you got to think of business as sports. And you think of these teams that go like these soccer teams, they're recruiting, you know, 10 year old kids, you know, across the world to come into like their program. And they're basically building their, their bench where some companies have the luxury of doing if they've got a lot of locations and you kind of create your own bench internally. So Barry, from a, from a standpoint of going in and diagnosing the cultural fit, uh, obviously that takes time. You know, you got to do things over zoom now, potentially, um, how, how, how long is your upfront without giving us too much of the special sauce 
But like, how long does it take you to say like, Hey, I get what, what this team's about, or I understand how they think about the business. Now I'm going to go out and, and, and find like the, the next, you know, franchise player here. To ascertain the intricacies and the nuances of the business and finding out what really sets that brand apart. It could take a, it could take really anywhere from a few hours of meeting or zoom to a couple of days. We, we spend thoughtful time with the client and any decision makers at really identifying what are the non-negotiables here? What, what is the brand vision? Where do you see the brand going the next one to three years, call it, or five years? And how do you envision this individual that we're looking for adding that long-term positive impact? Just so we have a better, an incredible crystal clear understanding of, okay, who is this, who is this role going to be filled by? How is this person going to add strategic value in terms of if it's a marketing person, is it more of a digital presence versus a, you know, some other kind of aspect? Um, you know, Pete, something that we're seeing, especially in the halo space that our clients and especially the private equity clients are looking for is an individual that has ex expertise, especially at the president, CEO or marketing level, expertise in terms of membership or subscription backgrounds because this business in the Halos world is really centric around membership and engagement. So that's critical. And then from, from a standpoint, obviously there's always a negotiation that happens between an executive and a company. Companies that are using Indeed exclusively or using Craigslist exclusively, they're probably also going on you know, salary.com and just saying, okay, I think this is what this person should make. So what's the benefit from your standpoint you know, of being in that position where you're actually seeing these employment agreements get signed, you can kind of calibrate, you know, here's what the actual right price range is for certain employees. And then to maybe pound the table in certain instances to say, hey, look, you know, we really found the ideal person and we think you should meet that compensation request. It all comes down to us, to Elliot's with our Elliot's knowledge and expertise with business intelligence. Our 18 search consultants are also supported by a team of 20 analysts and admin staff that are rock stars and that provide the, the metrics that underlie each of our decisions. When we go back to a client or prospective client, here's based off of the, the past searches we've done in this geographic area, for example, within the confines of this level, why we believe X salary, X bonus, and X percent of equity is an appropriate number. And we always, Pete, this is important to note, we always show the window. So if a client says, all right, guys, looking for a chief marketing officer, what, what is this person worth? We're going to say, look, we're going to show you this person at X, maybe a little bit under the target range you're looking for, and also mm -hmm. Y, above that range, because we want to show you every possible candidate we can find that we believe is going to, again, add that, add that long-term indelible impact upon your brand culturally and technically. Got it. So, you know, as, as you think about companies that are using the Elliott Group, which are mostly private equity back groups, obviously you got some private companies, and the flood of private equity that's coming into every industry, uh, how much of a, I'm not going to ask this question right, how much of an unfair advantage does a private equity back company have now than they used to? Really good question. Obviously, the private equity firms have the money to buy to buy um, to acquire units and businesses, etc., to grow their their brands. It really comes down to how patient are these leaders? How much of a how patient can they be when it comes to finding that talent? Um, that really is something that I think is critical here because. Look, we advise all of our clients as well as our candidates. We want to find you a rock star candidate that looks at the forest and not just the trees. It's really about that long term impact. And one way we do this is by, you know, and this is kind of to deviate off your question a little bit, Pete, but it's important for me to share. We want to get to know our, our candidates on that personal level, too. We get to know them at their the day they were from the day they were born. What decisions have they made in their life and why? Who are they? What are their what are their hobbies? What are their strengths? Their areas of opportunity. It's more than just a, we're not just finding a job for these individuals, and we're not just 
placing leadership for brands, but we're really driving leadership and brands forward with our forward thinking and strategic approach. So from all angles, handling that candidate background, providing as much intelligence on our candidates to our client as we can. At the end of the day, our fiduciary duty is to our client, serving as their brand extension and thought leader. Got it. So for executives who maybe got furloughed or maybe got, uh, you know, we're, we're part of companies that just, you know, haven't been able to financially make it through COVID, you, you've got a, uh, a wealth of, of seasoned executives that are now looking for their next position. I think a lot of people have realized that if they could find a job that pays them well enough to, to follow their passion and turn that into a profession is one of the, the cliches we like to use. Um, maybe some pointers on how people can get into something that maybe they don't have, you know, the direct work experience related to it, but you know, whether that's informational interviews, whether that's tapping into the network, whether it's trying to reach out to someone like you to, you know, show interest. I think, you know, perseverance and resilience is probably a key variable uh, in finding the next opportunity. So what, what are some of your advice to people that are maybe hitting uh, the reset button with no, you know, no fault of their own? Yeah, Pete. So the number one trait that we look for that we really celebrate is grit. And of course, confidentiality, given the nature of our work. Grit is incredibly, um, incredibly undervalued, I think, especially in these times with the pandemic. Grit and perseverance and tenacity sets individuals apart from the pack. Those who are relentless in their, in their quest to succeed, whether that's a personal goal, professional goal. Um, you know, I think leveraging one's network is incredible here. There's a saying that I like that, your network is your net worth. And I think that having that network by virtue of relationship building has really been pivotal for those that have been able to find opportunities. The candidates themselves get their own opportunity. You know, this is something we advise our, our candidates on all the time. Keep meeting people, keep building relationships and keep asking yourself, what's your why? What are you trying to accomplish here? Are you looking to just pay the bills? Are you looking to really lead a brand into a positive, exciting direction whether you're a marketing leader, finance, operations, franchise sales, any other, these and any other roles that we are placing, this sets apart, this grit and tenacity perseverance set apart rock star candidates in the future of leadership from just another person applying to 10,000 jobs on LinkedIn because they have nothing else to do. Right. Well, one, one question I had related to people, the velocity of jobs people have, have has gotten a lot higher velocity than like my dad had a job for, you know, 34 years, you know, so he's got the, let's say he's got the cleanest resume of anyone I know. So, you know, when you see a resume of someone who may have maybe had five stops over the last 15 years, does that, what, what's your, every story has got its own story, but you know, does that jump out at you as like, Oh, this, this must be a go-getter and they keep finding better opportunities or, are they too transient? And that's kind of a red flag for you. Really good question. I think, it, you know, look, at, to your point, every candidate is different. I think it depends on what, what did they accomplish at the, in their role? What were they able to achieve given their, the parameters of that role they were occupying? What long-term impact did they have on their brand? Are they leaving to find, are they relocating, for example? Are they relocating and that's why they're looking for a new opportunity or are they looking to hop around because they don't like the people they're working with? This is a bunch of things that I think individuals should look out for. And, and I think my advice would be in, in job hunting and career hunting is to really learn as much as you can about a brand's culture. That really, to me, is the most important factor because if you you could be the best CMO or the best CEO, but if you don't like where you're working, at the end of the day, you're not going to bring that passion that, that every brand is looking for and that every brand deserves. Whether you're a small, you know, innovative growth brand or you're a public company. Yeah, you know, we we did the Soul Cycle class again last night on the Halo Academy just to give myself a little free commercial right there. Nice, right? <laughs> that was great, Pete. You've been practicing good, that right? line. <laughs> yeah, I have. I've been, I wrote that down. Now it comes off naturally now. But you know, most of their instructors came from from members, and members got so excited and passionate about the company that they actually applied to become instructors. 
uh, which I thought was, you know, a, a great bench to potentially feed from um, when you've got avid, avid members. Um, but you also just reminded me of a story. I interviewed a kid one time right out of college and uh, he was from Long Island. So I said, you know, what he had a Jewish last name as I'm Jewish and I assume you are. Me and too. so it was Gannon. Yeah. So, you know, we're a minority. There's a minority podcast going on right now, right? <laughs> Mazel tov, yes, Shabbat Shalom, <laughs> Baruch Hashem. So this kid came in and he, he, I'm like, what summer camp did you go to? And he rattled off like six different summer camps, right? And there was something that, that like squeaked me about him. I didn't know what it was beforehand, but after I asked that question, you're allowed to go to like two summer camps. You might've like wet your bed or you got bullied the first one. But like, if you go to six, it's on you. It's not on the summer camp, right? So I feel like that was a tell when people like jump around so much. It's like, hey, like at some point you got to like digest where you are, learn. And, and it also might be if you jump around so much, maybe it's a question of your judgment where you're taking the wrong jobs and you're repeating that same issue, you know, on yourself. And now it shows up on your resume. Yeah, I think it. look at the end of the day, I think it really comes down to to not just how you're adding value, but. Who are you helping? Are you helping yourself? Are you helping this company? And are you even, like I said earlier, are you, are you, are you a part of the culture? A lot of candidates we speak with that have hopped around a lot in the past just didn't feel ingratiated. Maybe that's mm. the fault of the brand, or maybe that's maybe the candidate was maybe a little closed off. Everyone has their own reasons and stories, and which is totally okay. Um, and a great way, by the way, I'll just plug this in to ascertain a company's culture besides talking to members of the team is going onto YouTube and watching as many videos as you can. It's a very underutilized tool. And, um, you know, look, something that we're special, something that we really do a great job at is bringing our, our clients' culture to life, educating our candidates why they should leave a gainfully employed position. Most of our candidates are gainfully employed. Mm-hmm. barring a black swan event like the like the coronavirus pandemic gotcha so in uh in closing here give us a, a good quote i know you're uh you like sayings so give me one of your good sayings to uh, add to our halo archives oh i love it here let me uh let me i'm gonna here here it is i had to pull it up because it's not the shortest but one of the most impactful sayings that i have it's an african proverb and it's if you want to go fast go alone if you want to go far, go together. And at the end of the day, that means to me, look, it's a collaborative effort. We all are in the same world. We all need to help each other out as best as we can. And let's make, let's make this a positive sum game, whether it's a professional endeavor or your, you know, whatever it is, add value to someone, small, big, let's help each other out the best we can. I like it on three, Halo, one. <laughs> Two, three, Halo. Halo! Halo! One, two, three, <laughs> Elliot Proof. All right, man. <laughs>As we continue to build our Halo Talks email notification database, I want to offer you a free $10 instant gift card from our friends at Promotion Vault. Also to show you how easy it is to offer your members and prospects and clients the ability to get desired actions out of them and reward them in real time, go to halotalks.com, put your email address into the pop-up box, see how it works, get a free $10 gift card from us, and uh, keep listening and making everybody great.